What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Tonight, we're going over some more Flat Earth stuff. I hope that you guys are uh, prepared. I hope you got your butt holders a holding because we're going over some moon facts with Eric Dubay. And that's always the greatest thing to do is go over moon facts with Eric. Now, uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, like to claim a lot of things about the flat earth. And Eric DeBay is not only going to contradict himself, but also a lot of other flat earthers tonight. Tonight, we are discussing more the moonlight, basically. Um, we have the first one that's about, is moonlight just reflection of the sun's light? And uh, the answer to that is yes. Before we even start, the sun uh, or the the sun's light is reflected off of the moon, and is shown on the Earth. That uh, tends to reduce the light down to about 10, 15 percent, and so the intensity is not all that much. But also any kind of uh, heat, there's not much heat that's actually transferred to the Earth in that way, um, at least not in any kind of significant way. Um, if I'm wrong about that, let me know. I always want to be corrected. Got to turn on the sound first. Yeah, I know. Oh, the ominous music. I love it. The light of the moon is totally different than that of the sun. No, it's the effects it has on plants and food is different, and even the temperature is different. In the sunlight, the shade is always cooler than the sunlight itself. However, in the moonlight, it is cooler, while in the shade, it is warmer. Okay, so um, I get, I get the, I get how he doesn't really understand. For one thing, though, um, basically, while the sun's out during the day, you have materials that are soaking up that heat um, and and releasing it back out at the same time. Uh, during during the during the day, though, like it keeps getting, it keeps soaking up all that heat and that energy. So when the sun goes down and night comes out, you have energy being released slowly from like the ground. Uh, like in this particular thing right here, you would have like whatever table he's on would be releasing some kind of energy or heat. Uh, that towel would be like everything around there is going to be uh, releasing some kind of energy out into the, the atmosphere or into the world. And so like, uh, you know, if you, the way that he's got his experiment set up, it would be hotter underneath it because of the fact that that heat is getting trapped underneath whatever he's using to shield from the moon. Um, so like this even, this even happens because of like clouds. If you have a really cloudy night, uh, and, and you had a really hot day, chances are you're going to have kind of a really hot and stuffy night. Uh, that happens sometimes during, you know, the summer or whatnot, but clouds can even affect that too. So Eric is wrong here in that he thinks that the, the moonlight is, is like, has a cooling effect. Like for some reason, the light doesn't heat stuff up. It cools it down. For some, I don't know. I don't know exactly why he thinks that, but it, he thinks that, um, and this experiment is flawed because he doesn't account for all the factors. The moonlight couldn't be reflecting the sun's light, because then it would have the same effects in temperature. But it appears the moon is emitting its own light, and is translucent. The phases are a function of the moon, and it is not a spherical ball of rock reflecting sunlight as we are told. Okay, and he's not going to have any evidence to back up the whole idea that it's not a spherical rock orbiting the earth. Uh, he's not going to have anything to suggest that. He's not going to provide any kind of evidence um, to say that the moon even gives off its own light. But rather is a transparent, self-luminous disk. If the moon were a sphere, then we should be able to see the other side along with different faces. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yet we see only one side. Not only that, but many people have taken images of the moon with stars being seen through it. And in the afternoon, you can see the blue sky right through the moon. Okay, so you can't see stars through the moon. Um, the uh, eclipse stuff, I've been wrong in the past because I didn't exactly understand it, but 
like uh, the the <laughs> I do know that it's not just some kind of like internal function of the moon these phases or whatnot uh, that it goes through it's actually uh, just the way that the earth is positioned in the night sky uh, you know we see uh, different phases of the moon and the sun's light shines on it in not exactly different ways but it, just the position of the moon in the orbit around the earth uh, has it reflecting just a, a certain amount of the moon um, and so uh, you can't see stars through it although he may think that the edge of the moon is a lot farther away maybe maybe that i mean that would be a reason why he could see the stars when he thinks that they should be covered up um Everybody but knows the, moon. the moon is only four miles away that's 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 a little bit of a heads up for a video that should be coming out here in a few weeks <laughs> um but obviously, I mean, nothing that he's saying is actually provable in, in reality. It's obviously not a flat disk. Uh, right here, he's saying that you can see the sky through it or something like that. You're looking through the atmosphere at it. And also, the, the whole blueness or whatnot is caused by the, uh, the, um, uh, the way that the sun uh, uh, passes through our atmosphere and, and projects light in, in the different spectrum. And we see the blue spectrum. Um, Kreismer says everyone knows the moon is made of cheese. <laughs> what kind of cheese? Blue cheese. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. It just feels like he's pulling shit out of his ass at this point. He doesn't have anything to prove what he's saying here. Just look at these Muslim and Freemasonic depictions of the moon with the stars shining through it. Okay, so are you seriously telling me right now that you're using, like, symbols, like Freemasonic symbols and Islamic symbols to prove that, the, that you can see stars through the moon? Those are artistic depictions of shit. It's not a literal drawing of it. Sorry, I think I... Did I miss a uh, godless island? Guess not. Maybe it hasn't come through yet. Anyways. <laughs> What about stars and does outer space even exist? This is a good question and I would love to know. It, it would, I would love to know the answer. <laughs> yes and no. It is obvious that there are lights in the sky revolving above our heads called stars. But the mainstream version of what we believe about outer space is simply not true. The only reason we believe things about outer space is thanks to Hollywood, school science books, and government space agencies. No one knows for sure what those lights in the sky are, but all we do know is that they appear to be moving around us and that we are in the center. Okay, okay, Eric. We can legit get... <laughs> <laughs> NyQuil to the rescue! <laughs> Thanks, Godless Island. Um, so, uh, we can legit take a telescope and look out into the universe and see what stars are. And we know what they're made out of. We, well, I mean, we know these things with, with as much certainty as we can know it. So, I don't, under, I don't understand at all like why he would say that we don't know what stars are fucker we can look through a telescope and see them in the goddamn sky like like, like they're not in our sky it, well, not like the atmosphere or anything like that but they're out in space we can take a telescope we can look directly the fuck at it so i don't know why he thinks that we don't know what they're made out of we've been able to look out there and see stars being born motherfucker why do the this is some horrible fucking english 
Why do the sun and moon appear to be the same size? Perspective, motherfucker, learn it. The sun and moon appear to be the same size because they are the same size. Mainstream science wants you to believe that the reason the sun and moon look like the same size is because the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon and 400 times farther away. Well, I mean, that that's true. I mean, it's not exactly 400 times or whatnot. I mean, it, it's, it, it's a little bit, um, uh, you know, I think under that, it, technically under that, but still that, that our perspective and how far the moon, how big the moon is and how far it is away from the earth and how far the sun is away is the reason why they look about the same, but even even the sun the sun and the moon do change size at different times of the year because of their position in their orbit. Well, okay, so th not the sun, not that the sun has an orbit. We have a position in our orbit that changes the size that we perceive the sun to be, and then the the um, the moon's orbit changes so we see a change in its size. That's why there is a super moon where it gets really big in the sky. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, so, I mean, there, we see changes in it. It's not the same all the time. And actually, uh, you know, thousands and, 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 and millions of years out, um, you know, the, we will cease to be able to actually, uh, you know, have a full eclipse, like it, it'll, it'll only be the, uh, the kind of eclipse, um, where it, it doesn't completely block out the sun. Uh, well, a part, I thought there was another one, a partial eclipse. Well, no, no, no. Like where it has the, the, like a ring around it. Well, no, like a full solar, like we won't be able to see it. Um, uh, uh you know, Right now, we can still see the moon pass in front of the sun, and in certain places, it completely shuts the sun out. But what I'm saying is, is that as time progresses, the the moon is going to get farther away, oh, yeah, that's true. and and it won't be a total eclipse. The corona, you won't be able to see the corona. That's right. Moon is Oreo size when I hold up one beside it. Oh my God. Maybe it's really just small and like it's being projected on our faces all the time. <laughs> Apparently I just sound insane to Milwaukee atheists. <laughs> they say that this is just a coincidence, but that is their way of trying to explain why they appear to be similar sizes. Uh, okay, Chrysmer says his penis is a Chrysmer says that his penis is a hologram. I would agree. It is fairly obvious that the sun and moon are both circling overhead and are both equally balanced opposites and are the same size. Whoa, whoa, whoa. they're equally balanced opposites. Then how do you explain eclipses? I'm kind of curious because it does seem like you're adhering to that model that you have prior in in the video where you're saying that the sun and the moon are rotating in a perfect 180 degree thing around it. So I'm just kind of curious, how do you explain eclipses? Oh, oh, oh fuck. I, they're going to answer. He's going to answer it right now. What about eclipses? Let's fucking figure this shit out, shall we? Many skeptics like to use eclipses as proof of a globular Earth because of the round shadow that is cast upon the lunar surface. They claim that the Sun, Earth, and Moon align in a perfect 180 degree syzygy with the Sun casting Earth's shadow on the Moon. Okay, well, yes, that would make sense that on occasion it would do that. Um, let's see, the God Silent says, Moon in our eyes, love in our hearts. Thanks, God! <laughs> Uh, so it would it, this would make sense on a uh, globe Earth model. I mean, shit works out for that. So I don't I don't understand this problem. The only problem with this unproven theory is that over 50 times in the past 2,000 years, 
there have been lunar eclipses where the sun is still in the sky as the shadow is being cast upon the moon. Uh, okay, what? Oh no. This is one of those imbecile moments, I feel. And I should definitely call you a moron in the pure psychological sense. Because at this point, you're saying you're convoluting the, the uh, 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 a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. And apparently a solar eclipse can't happen. Is what you're saying. I don't. It's it's. It's the Illuminati. Don't pay attention to this show we have on screen. Just pay, don't listen to the truth that he's speaking. Oh. There you go. Don't listen to this shit. <laughs> uh, Godless Island, Shandola, Mozetti, Homoleki, Moshika, Boleka, Babork. I was speaking in tongues. God damn it. Jesus had his dick up inside me. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's some more. <laughs> that last one I didn't prom. I don't promise. I definitely don't promise that. <laughs> when the moon, I can't even sing it. I'm not even gonna try. Illuminati. Okay. This makes their theory impossible because no, the sun would be behind the ball Earth in a straight line with the Earth and Moon. Well, true, that's why it's called a solar eclipse, because the moon moves in front of the sun. I don't understand what your problem is, other than the fact that you think that, that lunar eclipses are the only thing that happen. Making it the only way for the Earth's round shadow to be cast on the moon. No, the moon is a spherical object, and it moves in front of the goddamn sun, and it <sighs> blocks out the sun. I don't know how else to explain it <coughs> however in many eclipses you can see the sun in the sky at the same time as the moon because it's a solar eclipse so the angle of the 180 degree syzygy is not the case and the round shadow on the moon couldn't possibly be from the earth yes it can during a lunar eclipse the shadow is cast upon the earth from the moon fucking blocking the sun during a solar eclipse. How is this guy this moronic? It, yes. Yes. No, but he's saying that there's only one kind of eclipse and that's a lunar eclipse. And so solar eclipses disprove lunar eclipses. I know. The ancients had their own explanation for this, known as Rahu, or the Black Sun, which is a third celestial body we are not told about that eclipses the sun and moon and is the same size. Ancient cultures described Rahu as a dark body and that it is what caused eclipses, not the Earth's shadow. Okay, uh, so Michelle says it's all about the angle of the moon's dangle. <laughs> okay, so I've heard this before in my in the one video I have where a flat earther tries to take on eclipses. And I have to say, I didn't know what he was talking about before, but I guess now I have a bit better of an understanding. They legit think that a third uh, celestial body or so, uh, some planetoid descends upon the earth, blocks out the moon and the sun, and then disappears. Basically, aliens come for a vacation every once in a while, and then they fucking leave within, like, a few minutes. It's, it's the aliens and the hollow moon. I figure, fuck them. Whether it is actually Ra who causing eclipses, I feel we need more evidence. But this was the explanation the ancients had for eclipses. Yeah! Because they didn't understand what an eclipse was. They didn't understand how the moon orbits around the earth and then it passes in fucking front of the, the, uh, the sun to create a solar eclipse. And then it, when it orbits around the earth and the earth comes in between the sun and the moon, you have a lunar eclipse. They didn't understand this, so they made up some fucking black god that was in the sky to hide their balls. 
Prince Thunderflare, don't trust science, trust ancient fairy tales. <laughs> legit, that's legit. You always want to go with the oldest model because it's the most correct, right? What about the Coriolis effect? That is so fucking good. Chrysmer, no. damn it, Chrysmer. Chrysmer, it's those time traveling space Jews, John. Jeez. <laughs> I know you are, honey. <laughs> Coriolis brainwashing effect engage. I guess I guess that's another uh, effect of the Illuminati. We we brainwash you with the Coriolis effect. So stop fucking questioning all this shit. Do you understand me? The, the, the scientist uh, skeptic mafia needs to donate more money to the stream. We need funds. <laughs> Not really. Y'all don't need to break yourselves. One ball earth proof is that sinks, drains, and toilets all spin one direction in the northern hemisphere, while in the southern hemisphere, they spin the opposite direction. This is known as the Coriolis effect. However, in the same house, people can observe water draining in different directions. If water spinning in a direction was the primary result of Earth's motion, then water should never be seen spinning in different directions in the same hemisphere. Yet this is exactly what occurs. Okay, so no, this right here is a common uh, myth that is, is pushed around. It's like one of those uh, common knowledge things that people always say. <laughs> Carlos Island, Skeptic Mafia, to the rescue! Now I'm broke. <laughs> See, I told you, don't break yourself. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a common knowledge myth. Um, obviously, the you know water can drain in either direction regardless. But there is a caveat here, because the Coriolis effect does have a significant effect on like weather and stuff like that. Because... Uh, hurricanes and stuff like that would not happen on a flat spherical earth. Um, if, uh, you know, especially if it doesn't move, uh, there would be no, um, uh, there would be no hur hurricanes, but we see hurricanes. Hurricanes cause the rotation in shit. Um, uh, it causes the rotation for hurricanes to happen. And it's why you don't really see hurricanes forming exactly at the equator, but yet you see them, uh, happening, uh, to the north and the south and hurricanes actually spin in different directions depending on what hemisphere they're in all right so we got a couple super chats here bo hobolo rasmussen get on your knees and start plays in jabus you would think with as much coughing i'm doing i'd be doing that um dasha i have uh Inovov, if the earth was flat our bears vodka and nuclear missiles would fall off the edge <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> the bears would fall off the edge. I would, I would believe that. See a bear fall off the edge and bite one of those fucking elephants? The water will drain based on the shape of the basin or the direction the water is flowing in, but not because of the Earth's shape. This trick is easily done by pouring the water in and draining it in the same direction. This is just another excuse to keep the globe Earth model going and proves nothing. The Coriolis effect is a real thing. It's been a real thing. Like we've known about it for a while. So um, it doesn't break the globe model. Actually, uh, you know, the the draining of the water only helps actually prove the globe model. Globe model. So I can't fucking talk. Uh, big fan. May the great Sky Daddy keep you in KC. Thank you, Epoch. I appreciate that. Are other planets flat? I would like to know. Please tell me if other planets are flat. When comparing the amateur pictures and videos of what we know as planets, it is obvious that NASA's pictures of planets are CGI fakes. We don't even- I don't know how it's obvious. They, I mean, it's not obvious to me, 
I mean, NASA does have to use uh, some Photoshop on them because of how they're captured. They have to composite them together from the different types of lenses that they take the pictures out of. Sometimes the planets move uh, far enough to notice it when they try to recombine them. So they got to touch them up a little bit. It's not all that bad. But also you can, like, when you know, like, Mars is going to be near or something like that or Jupiter or something, you can actually take a, a fairly medium-sized powered, uh, you know, telescope. You can look out and you can actually see the planets. I mean, you don't need anything other than just a telescope. You know what planets are, better yet what shape they are, other than that there are lights in the sky. Ancient cultures had their own description of what we would call planets. They knew planets as wandering stars. Oh, God damn it. Again with the ancient cultures. Why does this guy play so much emphasis on ancient culture, like, information? Like, he says, oh, it's ancient culture that says that they are wandering stars or some shit like that. While there are rogue planets that happen, um, you know, uh, planets actually exist. They're not just, like, stars. And we do know what stars actually are made out of. Milwaukee Atheist. Everyone needs to see Veritasium's video on the CE. What do you mean by CE there, Morant? Because there were lights in the sky, just like stars that wandered in their own unique paths, different from the other stars. The word planet itself is just the word plane with a T added to the end. <laughs> the T, the T on the end of <coughs> So basically, we're being lied to, and the obvious proof of it is the fact that planet is just plain with a T on the end of it. I can't believe I didn't think of that before now. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Milwaukee Atheist. So definitely check out Veritasium's video on, on that. Planets, or wandering stars, are not what we have been told they are. And using lights in the sky to prove the shape of the earth beneath your feet is not a valid argument to be made. Well, no, I would say that it is because like, for instance, we know what could potentially happen to our earth if we allow climate change to continue the current course. <coughs> we know this because we can look at, um, sorry, we can look at Venus we can look at Venus and see what happened there, and that's what could potentially happen here. And, um, you know, we, we know what happens there because we can we can look at Venus, see what's going on, and we can also test, uh, you know, the, the different light spectrum and whatnot to see what stars and, and systems are made out of. Um, <laughs> the Godless Island says, Sub to not Joe Witness, he makes great videos. I agree. <laughs> Um, so, uh, looking at these other planets and seeing how they operate gives us insight as to what we are, because the earth is not special. If we look out and we see a planet and we see, you know, that it's got moons that orbit around it, then we know that that is how our shit works as well. So, uh, that's what Galileo did. He looked out and he saw a planet with uh, moons orbiting it. And uh, he, he extrapolated that to be, well, this is proof of the fact that we are not in the center of the universe, that the moon uh, orbits around us and we orbit around the sun. Let's see. Michelle Anderson. Uh, hit is just high with the T on the end of it. So when you say hi, you're really threatening to hit someone. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good argument of uh, to absurdum uh, that that you gave there. Uh, that that <laughs> every time you say hi, it's like punching me in the face with your fucking mouth. <laughs> what about gravity? Okay, I have to say, I have wanted to know this shit for the longest fucking time. I want to know how they explain gravity. I can't figure it out. Uh -oh. Gravity was originally thought of by Freemason Sir Isaac Newton, who claimed that instead of objects falling due to density, 
Rather, they fell due to a mystical pulling force in which a smaller object can be pulled or attracted to a bigger object. Of course, gravity can be observed nowhere in nature, and scientists claim to have recently discovered gravitational waves, yet they still can't even prove it with experiments. Gravity also seems to be fickle and selective, and not only is it a force that pulls objects to the center of the spinning ball Earth, but it is also a force that allows heavenly bodies such as planets to orbit around bigger bodies. How is- Okay, so- <clears throat> Uh, he, he, he's casting a lot of doubt on the gravity thing. Of course, yes, uh, Sir Isaac Newton is the one that discovered, discovered gravity, uh, gave it its, um, uh, you know, was able to describe it scientifically. Uh, we have mathematical formulas that explain it. And the reason why we can't, like, things orbit around massive stars like our sun is because they get into an orbital path and they keep falling towards the sun but it falls at such a slow rate that it misses it and it comes back around. Um, Chrismer, Q Desert File, Gravity! <laughs> I know I did it, finally. Uh, so it, just because gravity is a thing and like we are pulled to the Earth because of how close we were, we are, um, the sun's gravitational pull, like we're not so close to it that we get pulled into the sun, obviously. Uh, we're in an orbital path that allows us to sort of continuously free fall, but see, we, we miss the sun. That's why it's not a perfect spherical path or orbits. Um, orbits are generally um, elongated into um, ellipses, and that's because they they fall and they come back and they fall. So, I mean, it's like, you know, it basically shoots around the sun and it keeps going in that kind of continuous thing. And so it gets into an orbit. <coughs> so just because Eric DeBay doesn't know how orbits work or how gravity works, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. That a force can be strong enough to hold oceans, buildings, and people stuck to the earth yet just weak enough to allow bugs, birds, and planes to fly freely in every direction. Okay, so I would say that they're not, like, freely uh, allowed. I mean, they're still... It's not like a bird can fly out of the atmosphere. Um, Prince Thunderflare. Gravity is magic because I don't to understand it. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to understand it. Yeah, I figured it was making fun of flat earthers. Uh, but they're still subjected to gravity. I mean, the whole fact that we can't just float up and go anywhere is, is evidence against, uh, uh, against this notion that gravity doesn't exist. Um, the fact that the bird has to continuously flap its wings and actually navigate through the fluid dynamics of the atmosphere is evidence of, you know, gravity. Um, and yes, water is held on to the earth by gravity. It's because we're so close to the center of the gravity for the earth that we are pulled onto it. How is it that gravity can keep the oceans from flying off into space, but weak enough not to sink a sailboat? Uh, well, because at that point, we're all kind of the same distance. We're relatively the same distance from the center of the earth, which would be the place where gravity is, uh, strongest, uh, on the earth. Um, we're, we're all relatively at the same spot. If, uh, this guy was kayaking way up high, he would still be up there because of the buoyancy and the fact that he's on top of the water, he's being pulled down or whatnot. If like, if, if we were someplace else, I mean, I, I guess maybe it could sink depending on what the fluid is. Uh, but I mean, still it doesn't sink because the same force of gravity that's holding the water on is the same force of gravity that is holding the canoe there. Um, at that point, uh, relatively locally, I mean, buoyancy takes over. Not to witness Iron Man can fly and he's made of metal. Therefore gravity doesn't exist. That's, that's a good one there. Not just. We are also told that gravity is what allows moons to orbit planets and planets to orbit around stars. Either gravity should cause people to stick to the Earth, or it should cause people to orbit the Earth. 
It should either allow the moons and planets to crash into the sun, or it should cause planets and moons to orbit the sun. Both functions are clearly different. The natural world around us was explained by the laws of density and buoyancy, in which objects fell due to being denser than the air surrounding it, or being less dense than the air surrounding it. Oh, God. Okay, uh, Patrick Ke Keelum. So the edge that goes around the entire world is well guarded by how many soldiers? Motherfuckers can't even guard the U.S.-Mexico border. Come on! <laughs> that's, that's very true. Uh, so now he's, he's, he's throwing into this whole idea of the fact that gravity can't do all these things when in actuality, the way that we understand gravity, it explains all of those things. It explains why we don't fall into the sun. It explains why, you know, we can skydive and not, you know, fall up, I guess, or float up out, off of the earth. Armed penguins, I get it. It, it, it. Fino 3000 said that armed penguins are protecting the Antarctic. <laughs> uh, so, and then he's throwing in this whole buoyancy idea that... <coughs> <coughs> he's throwing in this whole buoyancy idea where he thinks that, you know, because some things are more dense, they float up or, or, or they fall down and less dense things float up. Now, while this is true, they are still both subjected to gravity, and gravity is the thing that makes it go down or go up. If you had a completely uh, a space completely void of any gravitational forces, it wouldn't go anywhere because it doesn't have any forces acting on it. It doesn't just immediately fall down. I need to know on the flat Earth model what force is actually making it go down because it's not just buoyancy. Because you need a force to act upon it in order for it to go either direction. So it rises like a helium balloon. Density and buoyancy are the only reasons why objects fall or rise, and gravity can be found nowhere in the natural world. And it's found everywhere in the fucking natural world. It's, it's everywhere. It's fucking this Illuminati thing. Boom, it fell because of fucking gravity. It's everywhere, motherfucker. It is a hoax. Okay, that's easily explained because you've got one spring that's bigger than the other. The one's going to have more force and it's going to pull itself together a lot faster than the smaller one that's going to have a lot smaller of a force. Learn some basic physics, motherfucker, before you make these goddamn dumbass, idiotic, moronic, imbecilic fucking videos. What about seasons? I want you to tell me about seasons, Eric Dubai. Okay, I wanted to get to this point because right now he's being very contradictory. Earlier in the video, if you want to go back to last week's video, he had a model that had the sun and moon 180 degrees. But as you can plainly see here, you get the moon that's right there over the uh, West Africa. And then the sun is over like fucking, I don't know, Turkestan or something. And then it, it, it's yeah, Middle East. And, and so this is totally antithetical to the previous model that he showed us. So I don't know which one he actually believes is real. Does he think that the moon, it, as it gets closer to the sun, it starts disappearing on the other side? I, I don't know which model he actually accepts because he presents two antithetical models. Sun circles over the earth from tropic to tropic. So when the sun is circling at the Tropic of Cancer closest to the North Pole or the center of the flat earth, it is summer in the north and winter in the south. Okay, so I will say this is a bit better of an explanation than like the previous one because you're trying to account for shit, but it still doesn't work because of the fact that you have to have the sun so close to the earth and the moon so close. Like what, like for, yeah, I don't know. Like you don't know the forces that cause the change in orbit. You don't know how much energy is actually being output by the sun because you've got, um, you know, this weird dispersal pattern that causes light to shut off right in the middle of its path, which doesn't fucking happen. And then, uh, like, for instance, we know that for 
a certain amount of land, you get one uh, kilowatt from the sun. Uh, and then, you know, over a certain amount of area, you have certain amount of power that you can pull from the sun. And so with the 1.7 trillion or so uh, watts that the sun actually outputs to us, I, I don't know how that little bit of a sun can actually output all of that and, and, and it make its way here because you've got, you would have half of it being given off whatever's above us. And then the other half is down below. So I guess you're really looking at uh, 17 times two or 1.7 times two, which is 34, uh, 3.4 uh, uh, trillion Watts of, of power are being output by this thing just on the earth alone, that's going to be a little bit bigger than whatever the fuck it is. That's a good point, Casey. Casey brought up the whole point of the fact that tides would not work in the way that they do now. Hurricanes wouldn't work the way that they do now. None of this shit would work the way, like changing the model to this, you have way more questions than you actually have answers. Also, right. The, yeah, uh, it, it also wouldn't explain the electromagnetic field. KC was pointing out uh, that it, 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 like, it doesn't explain why we have one and and whatnot i guess in that vein it it uh also wouldn't explain like the radiation that a sun would give off like how how do we get past that because our our um electromagnetic uh field <coughs> our electromagnetic field shields us from that radiation which is why we were able to actually live here so like i'm saying this model asks way more questions than it actually answers. When the sun is circling nearest the southern tropic of Capricorn, it is summer in the south and winter in the north. Since the sun is smaller and closer than we have been told, it is more logical to think that this is the reason why we have seasons. If the sun was 93 million miles away, we should very rarely experience temperature differences, better yet, not four distinct seasons. Uh, no, we should expect that with the way that our earth is tilted, uh, with the way that our, our environment works in general. Uh, Milwaukee atheists, how do we even get tides without gravity? I don't fucking know. I don't know how, why they were. I'm guessing, considering the fact that he feels like eclipses are an innate thing, or not eclipses, sorry. I guess he feels like since the lunar phases are an innate thing to the moon and do not require the, the sun... My guess is, is that the tides don't require the moon, even though they fucking do. But no, like what he's saying right here, he has no like factual basis for. All he's saying is just, oh, look, this right here is how it is. And, and I don't have any kind of evidence for it. Well, you could go out there and you can look up like why we have seasons and figure out that it's the tilt of the earth and it's the orbit around the sun and everything like that we move like a pretty good bit, a sizable bit, and it does change the temperature of the earth. Um, but we also have our local weather, you know, and, and our climate in general. I, I just, I don't, so fucking stupid. Keith McDonald, I've said it before, and this proves a conspiracy that these idiots are shills for universities that uh, get more people to major in science-based classes. <laughs> <laughs> this, this <laughs> I don't I don't know <laughs> I don't know about that I I, I don't know I, I'd have to I'd have to get a whole bunch of them together and be like yeah we were paid by the universities there would be a paper trail for that All right, so I think that we're going to end it here. We're going to pick back up next week with time zones because obviously he's got a fantastic answer for that, but it's also been about an hour, and uh, we still have to get to the rest of the comments. So if you're here for the video portion, that is going to be over with, but we do have awesome comments that's going to be coming up. So um, I hope that you will subscribe if you're about to leave. Um, if you're not, then I'm happy to have you here. How you doing? We got a Q&A right after the comments too, so we need to hurry this shit up, don't we?